Welcome to the Serve the Team podcast with your host, Shelley Bischoff. The podcast will explore psychological safety and how it influences how teams work together. There is no doubt that leaders face significant workforce challenges. This podcast focuses on opportunities for leaders to empower high performance in their teams and enhance the employee experience of coming to work. Join the conversation with Shelley as she speaks freely about how you can best serve your team today. and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2024 and another year of Serve the Team. I'm really excited to enter the second year of the podcast and I'm really looking forward to the guests scheduled for upcoming episodes. I've had a chance to review the backtrack of the podcast in its first year and it's really interesting to see the statistics. For example, the podcast has been downloaded in 14 countries including Canada, the United States, Panama, Australia, and the United Kingdom. Notable cities for downloads are Edmonton, Alberta, Ottawa and Toronto, and Calgary. Popular downloads included Episode 2, What is Psychological Safety and How it Impacts Teams, Episode 3, The Impact of Culture on Psychological Safety, and Episode 5, Where is the Psychological Safety for Leaders? Other episodes of interest to listeners included Cultivating a Trans-Inclusive Workplace and How Kindness Impacts Team Psychological Safety. There were a total of 15 episodes released in 2023 and over 300 downloads. My goal starting the podcast was to record one episode on average per month for at least one year, and I did it. And I'm very proud of that because it takes so much time, learning, and effort in order to host a podcast. It doesn't just include scripting, organizing guests, preparing podcast episodes and topics. It also includes ensuring that the editing and the support required for the podcast episodes to be released is consistent and of high quality. My primary goal of hosting the podcast was to support leaders in their practice to support their teams at a level that will enhance not only the collaboration, the learning environment, but also to be able to perform and work outside what's always been expected in order to synergize efforts to achieve high value outcomes. Feedback from listeners indicates they find the information relevant, interesting, and pragmatic in terms of application in their team settings. I have spent the last few weeks reviewing and reflecting on the podcast, asking myself questions such as, do I continue? Is it worth it? Is there anyone listening? And does it provide value? What I have decided is that I do want to continue sharing my voice and that of others to support the leadership practices necessary to creating and maintaining psychological safety. My motivation to support leaders is based on my experience working with leaders and teams together with the observation that leaders don't necessarily understand how to support their teams to feel safe enough to contribute in authentic and meaningful ways. As I have said in the past, I believe psychological safety is the driver for organizations to work in learning environments where growth, innovation, and new ways of thinking can occur. The modern workplace leaves no room or margin for passive leadership practices. Leaders must first be able to validate that psychological safety is not a nice to have, but a need to have to meet evolving organizational needs and employee expectations. This podcast is one way that I give back to the workplace. And on that note, let's think about reflection for the remainder of this episode from the perspective of leadership practice. It's that time of year where we all sit back and think about what happened in the last year, what went well, what were challenges faced, and in some cases avoided. Did we have any lessons learned? How are we feeling about our practice to lead others? And where are the opportunities for us to grow and develop our leadership practice? Reflection also includes considering where we want to go, how we want to grow, and what continues our motivation to lead. 
Reflection includes planning the goals we set for ourselves and what help or support we need going forward. Reflection is a critical element for leaders to gain awareness and insight into their leadership practices and where and how they can continuously improve. However, it takes time, dedicated, regular time to reflect. Setting aside dedicated time in your schedule for reflection must be structured in a way that is meaningful to you. Do you set time away on a daily basis or is it weekly or monthly? Do you keep a leadership journal or do you make notes when necessary or as they occur when something comes to mind? Documenting your experiences can help you track your growth, identify challenges, response patterns, and triggers for further reflection. Consider using structured questions in your reflection practice, such as, in what way have I grown over the past year? What am I learning as a leader that is influencing my perspective of the team? Where am I continuing to face challenges with my practice? What impact did my leadership practice have on my team or organization over the last year? And where do I feel I could do better or approach things differently than I have in the past? And don't forget to consider the successes that you have experienced as a leader, the outcomes you feel good about, the positive feedback you receive, and when your actions aligned with your leadership values and principles. Do you solicit feedback from others, or are you ready to consider this strategy? Soliciting feedback from others is a great opportunity to receive honest and constructive input about your leadership style, practice, and effectiveness. This takes courage, asking others to tell us how they feel about how we lead. The value of this feedback can be significant. Does the feedback affirm what you already felt or already knew? Or have you learned something different than what you expected? And if so, how can this information be used to influence your practice moving forward? We can sometimes be left with more questions after receiving feedback from others. Seeking diverse perspectives on your leadership practice can help you gain a broader understanding of your practice from individuals coming from different backgrounds or experiences and can ultimately lead you to having deeper awareness of your practice. I am happy to share feedback that I received from a member of a board that I was leading. He asked if we could speak privately at the end of a board meeting one day. He explained that he felt I was not providing adequate context about the issues being discussed on the agenda. He did not have expertise in the industry we were supporting and felt he needed much more in-depth information or resources to help him understand the full context of an item prior to voting and determining whether he supported a particular position. This was one of my early experiences as a leader and was taken aback by his candid approach to providing me feedback. I remember telling the board that I was open and receptive to receiving feedback, irrespective of whether it was positive or negative. But I never really considered that someone would actually come forward and candidly provide this type of feedback. I knew the board member had responsibility to ensure he read all the attachments and resources available. However, as I reflected on the conversation the next day, a couple of things came to mind. First, I had extensive experience in the industry we were supporting. Second, I hadn't considered that members without that experience may need more time to discuss items or additional information to help them clarify the issues. I had an instinctive response to react negatively to the board member's feedback. However, I needed to acknowledge his integrity of taking the opportunity at my offer to provide feedback. I had a choice. I could reflect on that feedback and consider 
consider whether I needed to make adjustments in my leadership practice as it related to supporting the members on the board. Or I could choose to placate the member and downplay the feedback. To be honest, I didn't really know what I should do, so I asked for help from the executive director of the organization. And I'm really glad I made that decision because it was early in my career and I feel she provided a great sounding board opportunity for me to explain the feedback, my reaction, thoughts, and some ideas on how to respond. The director also had the advantage of knowing the board member who had offered the feedback and felt his intent was positive and in support of my continuing development as a leader. I decided to approach the board and ask them how they would like to receive information, what type of information is useful, and were there any other mechanisms that would support their ability to fully understand issues. What was interesting is that there were several members who indicated there would be value in hearing from the program leads working on the front lines to provide us an overview of programs, challenges, and needs. We incorporated the practice of having one program lead present at every board meeting. What's interesting is how much I learned about programs that I thought I understood and service needs that were more well-defined. The board member who had originally offered his feedback became more confident in his knowledge and ability to contribute. He continued to offer feedback both to myself and other members and we came to rely on his honest, candid, well-intentioned support. What did I learn? I felt that I had perceived everyone on the board to have the information they needed in order to contribute. My perceptions were wrong, and the board member who had offered his feedback gave me the opportunity to learn from first-hand experience how important it is to park our perceptions. Anyone who has received negative feedback knows they never forget those situations where someone told them they could be a better leader or that what they are doing is not enough. And that goes for me too. I will never forget that situation and am glad I took the time to reflect and ask for help before I responded. I wish I could say that I've done the right thing in every case where feedback has not been positive in my career, but I would be telling you an untruth because it depends on the circumstances, our feelings, and what's at stake. Leaders are people first, and they make mistakes. What's important is how we learn from those mistakes. The reflection of experiences where we were effective leaders are just as relevant as those experiences where we struggled as leaders. Reflection is the gift of opportunity to gain awareness, clarify your leadership values and principles, and plan how you want and need to grow in your practice. Seek ways to develop Develop your reflection skills and abilities. Connect with others in a peer group. Join a leadership development program or access an executive or leadership coach. Your reflection practice will help you with self-awareness and self-awareness will give you insight to understanding how you manifest to others as a leader. Remember to support the reflection practice of others by being a good listener, a sounding board, and a place where people are safe to express how they're feeling. There aren't enough safe spaces at work for people to be able to express how they're really feeling, and what they need for support. Rather than ending this episode by asking how you are serving your team today, I am going to ask you to reflect on your leadership practice. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I look forward to you listening in again. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Shelly invites you to send your feedback, thoughts, and ideas to Shelly at servetheteam.ca. Follow Serve the Team on social media or check out servetheteam.ca where additional articles and information is available. Specific references made in the podcast can be located in the episode show notes. 